Oh. And summertime is hot. Summertime. It's hot. It's sticky yeah. in Philadelphia. When it's so. muggy, it's muggy and it's unrelentless. Uh, I believe we are now live. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Maestro's Corner for Opera 101, Cleveland Opera Theater. My name is Domenico Boyajan. Um, I'm music director of Cleveland Opera Theater. And today we have other special guests. Uh, in the likes of uh, American mezzo-soprano Kendra Broom. Uh, welcome, Kendra. And Japanese bass baritone uh, Hidenori Inoue. Inoue. Hello. Welcome, Hidenori. So, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's, another special, it's another special day because uh, young singers like yourselves are uh, the fuel of... Uh, opera today, wherever you are, uh, US, Japan, Europe, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, you, you are the fire that is, that is uh, the, the charcoal that is pushing the boat forward, you know, um, and you're the guys that are making, that, that are making a difference in, 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 uh, in opera. So we want to know a little bit about, about your story, and I'm, I'm sure that you can be, uh, uh, like of inspiration to uh, other young singers, even younger than you, uh, uh, people that just probably are going to start going to college in the fall uh, that have no idea uh, what's after their studies, but they just really love singing. Like yourselves, you are kind of pulled into this. I am sure that no one forced you to be an opera singer. You just had a call like myself, right? It's just, Domenico, you have to be a conductor. No, nope. no, nope. nobody ever said that. You just feel it. You just feel it and you do it for the love of it, you know? Yeah. Um, Kendra, tell us a little bit, uh, a little bit about your story. Uh, why did you start? Where did you study? And, uh, and then I'll ask the same question to Hida. Sure. Um, my story is a little unique, as you know, most opera singer stories are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're all snowflakes here. Um, I started singing um, through an outreach program called the Young Musicians. Now it's the Young Musicians Choral Orchestra. Um, when I went, it was the Young Musicians Program in the Bay Area, California, where I'm from. Um, and uh, it's an outreach program for uh, disadvantaged youth in the area. And um, they operate through what they call the Power Triangle, which is uh, citizenship, academics, and musicianship. Nice. So their whole... Um, their whole goal is they have a hundred percent college acceptance rate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So I joined that program when I was uh, about 13 mm -hmm. and um, I didn't play any instruments at the time. So I auditioned singing um, and I was accepted into the program. So it's right. a full scholarship. Yeah. It's a full scholarship right. program and um, they give you everything from voice lessons to, um, help filling out college applications. So, um, so that's how I ended up going to college, um, to conservatory. Um, they helped the whole process, got a scholarship to Manhattan school of music. Um, mm -hmm. where I've met so many wonderful colleagues. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then from there, I, um, continued my studies at the Curtis Institute of music. Okay. Um, and I am now in Philadelphia still, but um, headed to Colorado in the fall. Very good, very good. Yeah, none, none of us have like a a path, right? Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> it. That's why I love to do these because I'm just curious to see how did you get here? Uh, because the the so-called normal way. I'm going to apply for a bachelor's of music and then I will do my master's and then I will be a musician. It, it's, it's, 
we are all so different and we end up in the same place. So it's so interesting. Uh, he that you also, I, I know a little bit of your story. You also have a very interesting story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, singing is um, very new um, to me, still new to me. Um, I went to, um, I, so I'm originally from Japan. I graduated law school for my normal time, quote, quote, normal time, which was like 18 to 21, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. I went to law school, I graduated law school, but I didn't want to be a lawyer. So I started working in the sales division of big tire company in Tokyo. Then after two years working in Tokyo, I moved to the United States um, approximately eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started working as a sales manager of uh, industrial machine trading, machinery trading. Wow. So, yeah, I was working in New Jersey, um, commuting from Pennsylvania to New Jersey for almost two years. And at the same time, I hated singing. I hated music back then. Wow. The reason why mm -hmm. was both my parents were opera singers. And my parents' parents are composer, conductor. I um, had no idea. Yeah, wow. I'm the third generation of musician, as long as wow. I know, mm -hmm. um, from both sides. So mm -hmm. in wow. my life, I hated it. I shoved <laughs> music away from me. I ran away. I thought I ran too, way too far away from yep. Japan to the United yep. States. But no. Still, nope. <laughs> One, <laughs> once I start taking voice lists, I'm like, boom, this is a thing I want to do for the rest of my life. So I remember 2014 or 2015, I joined um, Manhattan School of Music when I was 28 or 9 mm -hmm. um, as a freshman mm -hmm. undergrad with 17, 18 years old um, students. Yeah. Then that year, um, uh -huh. I... So I barely know how to, I didn't even know how to sing, to be honest. Then I got a chance to do whole opera the first time of my life. Wow. That's how I met Kendra. Oh, I see. Yeah. Nice. And Kendra was uh, already a savage, beautiful singer. And I was like, I have no idea. I, I've never sung French. I've never sung opera. I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that was a starting point. And then second, second operatic um, scenes, the first opera scene, that's how I met Maestro. Mm -hmm. And so back then I was like, that was my second kind of opera related thing. Besides, well, if, you, if you got it, you got it. You yeah, know? there's no hiding a natural talent. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean not... listen, there's a, obviously, obviously, uh, 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 you know, even technique sometimes is just, uh, it's just something that, that, that people are, are, are born with. I mean, just think, uh, just think back in the day uh, without naming names, uh, even singers that unfortunately are, are not with us any longer, uh, like how many have not studied anything and we're just incredible musicians, incredible technicians, you know? Mm. Now, uh, for the people that are listening to this, I'm not saying school is bad at all, <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm not promoting ignorance by any means. Actually, I'm promoting, mm. you know, uh, education, obviously. Uh, but in certain cases, again, if you got it, you got it. You know, mm. you have the voice, you got the looks, and you have the technique. You just have to, uh, sometimes we just have to polish a few things. I have to polish a few things as a conductor. Uh, you guys are going to have to polish a few things as you are growing. Your your bodies are going to change. Your voice mm -hmm. is going to change. Uh, so it's just uh, being a human being, you know, that's that, that that's all there is to that. I mean, the singing is such a simple thing. Like, if you can speak, you can sing. And I totally agree. Like, I think everyone has certain um, level of um, accessibility to singing, and especially mm -hmm. classical singing is such a natural for our body. Um, technique is something to maintain or even sing it even easier and healthier and forever. Um, just yeah. like some older singers um, yeah. Yeah. could sing until they died. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. 
Kendra, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but, but, but lessons and, and going to school, uh, the, the diff, the, probably the, uh, one of the main differences than just singing in the shower is you're, you're getting to know your body. You're getting to start feeling things inside because you're the, the only person that can reproduce, reproduce uh, sound. I mean, I, I can tell you how to do something, but if you don't do it, if you can't feel it, uh, I have to give you very specific instructions if I were to be your teacher. I can't tell you, can you make a, a smoother sound? It, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. So uh, what is the difference for the people that don't know? What is the difference between just singing in the shower and uh, operatic te technique? Um, I would say from my perspective, a lot of it has to do with um, control and knowledge. So being able to um, know the sound that you want to create um, and how to reproduce that. As singers, we can't hear ourselves. So um, we have to rely so much on um, learning by doing and learning by hearing from others and getting feedback. And that's part of where the schooling really comes in handy. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you think you're doing something and then it's not at all what you're intending. Um, and I would say the other thing about technique is that um, as a singer, every day is a new day. Your body is your instrument and against you mm -hmm. and uh, technique will get you that are harder days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, was I breaking you up? You're breaking up a little just, bit. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I don't know if Hida is breaking up. Hida, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you're just breaking up a little bit. Uh, while you come back, yeah, so technique you... gets you through. Okay, okay. Um, Hida, in your experience, what's the difference? And maybe I can ask this Kendra as well. Uh, what's the difference between one teacher and another teacher? I obviously I know I know the answer, but if 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 I'm new to music and I have. Uh, so-called normal job, whatever that means. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, every teacher is the same. Maybe they have a different style of teaching, but it's like, uh, you know, learning at a, a saw a table. There has to be only one way of doing it. The answer is no. Uh, what's, uh, what's the difference between going from a teacher to a teacher? So for me, it was more for, um, it's, not, it's almost like finding therapist or your doctor <laughs> um, it's like if some some teachers it's easy to click like some teacher use a specific word a specific way to connect to for example um what is what is breathing for you and mm -hmm. some teacher can explain it very um vocal pedagogy way or more um some people's um, use some like examples like smell it breathing like smelling flowers and i for me it didn't work <laughs> um, like i, I know what I you mean, mean. I, yeah. know what you mean. Yep. <laughs> I think it's that depending on the teacher i think they, their focus is different as well so first of all first thing is what kind of language they use and then also what kind of um background in a certain way like some teachers are more focused on breathing rather than um space of the the, the facial space or uh, expression or anything and some teacher can express uh, can work with your language or how language can help you but some teacher just don't mm -hmm. and there are a lot of teachers who used to be a great singer um which I had less time with those teachers. However, they're not necessarily the best teacher for teaching. And they're more like, they, are, they know what they're doing, but they are not um, really, don't know how to access, to explain to people. I think they, those two things are huge, big difference between know how to do it and how you can do it and can teach that to other people. It's two yeah. different skills. 
Yeah. Um, so for young singers, um, especially um, even like older singers too, I think um, we, it's like therapist has their own setup, therapist. Yeah. It's the same thing. Regardless where wherever you are in the career, you have to have a teacher. Yeah. And sometimes your technique develops and your needs changes throughout of your career. So when you started, to be honest, you can learn a lot of things from any teacher. Mm -hmm. um, regardless if it's a good technique or bad technique. Um, you don't yeah. even know if it's a good That's technique right. or bad Amen technique. Amen to that. You. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Until it's too late. Yeah, until it's too late. Yes. Yeah. So you have to have a certain sense of like, okay, it's not working to me. Yeah. So maybe I have to start looking for other teachers or... Yeah. Um, it, it, regardless. It actually, that you compared it to... Uh, it's like finding a therapist. It is so personal. You know, you didn't just you didn't just pick. It's like finding a, a driver. A driver is a driver, right? As long as it takes he take or she takes me safely to my location. But it's it's so personal. It it has to not just click personality wise, but you mentioned language. You mentioned uh, certain type of examples. Uh, very specific things that work for you as a person that may not work for Kendra as an example, you know, right. Um, that's great. Uh, Kendra, anything to add, um, as far as your experience is concerned? Oh, I think that, um, everything he said is right on. Um, I would add that, you know, every voice is also different and, um, some things work well for some voices that don't work well for other voices. But I think, I mean, I'm optimistic and I think that all teachers are pretty much after the same sort of freedom and purity of sound. Uh, they just have different ways of saying it. And sometimes, yeah. you know, something will be more helpful for you. Yeah. Um, but they are very personal and intimate relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, it's hard to balance that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you still hear me? Every once in a while, I lose you. Okay, okay, very good. Um, so you graduate multiple times from multiple institutions, Kendra. And then as a young singer, what do you do? You just start singing? You just knock on, uh, on theaters and say, hey, I graduated. This is uh, this is it. <laughs> I'm it. <laughs> How's it work? Uh, it's tricky. Um, I was very lucky in that I had supportive um, professors mm -hmm. who professors and connections who um, recommended me for all of my major jobs after graduation and leading into graduation. Um, and I was also really blessed with um, Opera Philadelphia, which is a fantastic company. Mm -hmm. And um, so I worked with them in their artist program. And, um, and then last season I said, you know what? I have to, do, have to do the audition round, the young artist audition round. So I did and um, uh, luckily, Opera Colorado also extended a uh, residency. Oh, very good. Very good. So um, I lost you again. So basically the young artist route is, uh, it seems to be the route to follow, I guess. Uh, what's your take, uh, Hida? Is that also what you did? Um, that's actually a really good point, to be honest. I think, um, I personally, I did the Young Artist Program in Tulsa, Oklahoma once. However, huh. did it lead to summer goals? Um, my answer would be no. Um, at some point, I had to decide from, um, change myself from Young Artist to um, Principal Artist. Mm -hmm. and, I basically that transition. I didn't have any job for one se one like half season. <clears throat> oh, you didn't? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the 
I think I've met a lot of young people who, what I learned through a lot of young artists or any jobs I encountered. There are a lot of people who went through a lot of young artists, including um, Metropolitan Opera or um, Chicago. Yeah. However, they are no, regardless of which young artist, like very famous young artist program, they are still young artists. They, people who, and the hiring part doesn't look at young artists as professional, no, no, no professional, it's more like um, principal artist. Mm -hmm. So I realized that and I had to make a decision. Do I want to keep doing um, young artists so I have steady income? Or yeah. I will put myself in a harder situation, which I didn't have any connection and I was struggling um, to mm -hmm. create connection. Um, but I just switched my mindset like, okay, I love doing this. And I rather do, if I want to do, um, sing, keep singing, I rather keep singing as a principal artist. So yeah. Yeah. I made a choice not to um, take the uh, young artist route. Uh, yeah, it I is the choice that you have to make. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so far I have been very fortunate. I, while like I was off for a couple of months, um, I auditioned for a lot of companies in New York City or, and uh, um, then luckily I got the manager um, who could contact to those companies. Oh, uh, wonderful. Wonderful. So, so did you did you contact the manager or they came to you or it was a combination? That's, that's also the interesting thing. Like I did like three gigs in New York City a lot um, when I was like graduating on um, Manhattan School of Music. Mm -hmm. um, so through out of those three gigs, well, one gig was a, um, a covering the role in La Forza, La Forza del Destino. Um, the, the company called New Amsterdam Opera they okay. they were a very young company back then and i did the um preview concert um that, that time my the duet partner was very established singer and okay. her manager or her teacher contacted um, my current manager that hey by the way i heard this person that you might be interested in he's mm -hmm. a big um bass player on bass and so she came, she invited me to her workshop and mm -hmm. I showed up her workshop and I sang for her. And she was like, you, you seem like very um, interesting, interesting guy and interesting, have an interesting voice. So I will, I'm willing to mentor you for one year. Okay, then good. She mentored me for one year. Then Wonderful. she was like, okay, you're good to go. And I'm happy to sign. Very good. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Hi, Kendra. <laughs> Um, I'm in the city, how's the signal so bad? <laughs> well, we're we're glad to have you back. That's good. I, I was trying to, to to really focus on what he was saying and also trying to figure out how to get you back. So I'm, I'm glad you were able to. Um, so we were just talking about uh, managers, uh, basically, and he was telling us the the story of, uh, uh, I mean, his, his experience and and how to get managers. And again, there's not really. A one way of doing it. no uh, it's it's so different for for everyone um, uh, that's what makes it uh, challenging uh, sometimes for 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 someone that is starting in this business um, because uh, whomever you talk to they uh, they just have different opinions mm -hmm. you know it's like going to seven coaches and your teacher and everybody's just going to tell you, give you a different opinion on right. how something should be done. Uh, you know, so me as a conductor, I'm, I'm really trying to stay away from uh, from giving vocal opinions. Actually, I, I don't give vocal opinions at all. Uh, it's not my field. Uh, but what we can talk about is music and, and language. And I think that's, that's my job mostly, you know. Um, Kendra, do you have management? Uh, are you looking for management? Do you want management? <laughs> Those are great questions. I don't have management. Um, I've been doing residencies um, 
so far. So I haven't really been looking for it. Um, but at some point I have to fly the coop. Is that an expression? Um, if not, we can make it into one. So. Okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I missed Hide's story about the management. I'm gonna have to rewind and look at that. You know what? It will be on uh, on Facebook in about 20 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, that's that's another aspect of uh, of of the business that that sometimes our audiences uh, um, don't think about, and they shouldn't. They shouldn't. That's that's why we are here. It's it's a way of of. Uh, letting people discover what's what's actually behind the scenes. So all that we are talking about is behind the scenes. What's mm -hmm. in front of the scenes, they can come and watch and listen. What's behind the scenes, I think it's interesting to 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 find out. Um, let, let's talk about, oh, did you want to say something? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, as, sorry, the, about management, I think uh -huh. it's, for, for me, it's more for, Basically, a lot of young singers, or including my, myself, tend to think like, "Okay, if you get management, then you're good to then go." You get work. It's, That's right. It's not going to be like that. It's management might have a little bit of access to different kind of doors. Mm. However, after this COVID thing, even it's more for that your individual um, connection is more important than man managers. I think. Yeah. Like, they might be able to take you to the in front of the door of audition, but what you do inside of the room is totally up to you. Amen to that. I've, I've, I've been saying it for the past probably 15 years. Uh, you know, uh, I just need to be on the podium. If I get to be on the podium, then it's totally on me. But you yes. kind of need that that help or push or luck or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. to to be there because sometimes, as as we all know, it has nothing to do with uh, not working hard enough. Okay, and I think that there's there might be a misconception sometimes uh, out there where uh, the artist doesn't work. Okay, uh, artists, singers, musicians that go do other jobs are usually praised as being the hardest workers because we are working all the time. Yep. There is not one minute of the day in which uh, we are not thinking about work, doing work, emails, phone calls, text messages because of uh, because of our little project. Uh, that we, we can talk about in a, in a few minutes with you guys. I've been talking to you like constantly in the past. If it's not Kendra, is uh, Hide. If it's not Hide, is uh, Yong Kwang. If it's not Yong Kwang, is, is someone else. It's just putting things together. And just for one little thing, just for one little tiny little project that would last one hour. And then what's yeah. the next thing? And the next thing? And the next thing? I mean, it's just constant. It's constant. Are you feeling the same way, uh, Kendra? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a uh, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is. It is a lifestyle, uh, and and some embrace it better than others. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little tired of it myself. Just a tad. Just a tad. How about you, Hida? Are you are you the kind of man that enjoys like? Oh, oof. I mean, it, that's the big thing. Is I mean, sometimes it, 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 I hit the bottom and like I keep going because I just love love it. Um, I love the challenge. Um, but then daily life, we are. Um, it's so important for um, young singers as well. To be honest, like including myself, that uh, mental hygiene. Yes, <laughs> we, are, we are constantly being judged by people, my, our colleagues or like our audiences, like we're such yeah. a weird place and then we have to keep working on it. And we spend like going through like two line of the singing, spending like $300 of lessons, you know, it's, or 
just to get through two, two lines something yeah. sometimes and it's a such a like if you are not mentally strong or if you don't know what to do or what you want to do or is this truly you want to do this is tough business yeah so uh, i i had a singer in the family my my dad had uh his his share of the successes uh, around the world uh so i'm i'm like second generation also so i've, I've seen it unfold um uh, and i will say it and repeat it until i die uh being a singer as far as i'm concerned is the hardest job uh, in the music business i think it's uh tough mentally it's tough physically uh the preparation that you guys have oh by the way i don't feel bad for you at all and i'm not trying to be apologetic at all i'm just trying to say that you are amazing uh the preparation that you have to have languages music always be prepared uh it's funny that you, you can apply to schools and you already have to have knowledge of music knowledge of singing knowledge you already have to have you have to be somewhat of a singer while you are applying for your first day in college you know it's crazy um you are amazing human beings because uh you are giving us your you're facing the audience i'm not the orchestra is not we're in the pit you are and you always have to feel good at least show us that you feel good you always have to sing well you always have to be prepared uh and we love you for it because also you have the power of making those emotions of creating those moments it's because of you okay it starts with the singer it starts with your acting with your singing with what you can communicate to people so what you're doing is absolutely amazing and the most difficult thing um as far as music is concerned okay so hey good job uh speaking of speaking of good job uh what is a favorite role that either you did already or that you absolutely need to do right now uh let's start with Kendra uh favorite role for me would have to be Melisande in WC's Pelias Melisande such a I I just love WC um and the role is very interesting and challenging dramatically um mm -hmm. so that was that was a huge highlight for me Oh the, in the, terms the, of what you went... already you did already right okay I did yeah Good. yeah in terms of what I would love to sing probably um Octavian Rosen Cavalier Strauss uh -huh. just because of the music really yeah. um it's beautiful it, it really is it really is good choices Kendra very very good choices uh how you how about you Mr. Bass Baritone <laughs> well there are, I have three roles I my ideal roles including like roles I've done in the past um Uh -huh. One is like one of the uh, our concert piece Attila. Um, uh -huh. Luckily I got a chance to do like aria cabaletta then rest of the act um with um Opera Omaha. Um the outdoor concert um and it was like one of the great role for me as a bass baritone and also like being um Attila the Hun such a yeah. bad, bad guy. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm eager to do whole role of Attila. And also I've done Nepolello and Commendatore was Commendatore is always like I get hired for um no. this, on the top of Nepolello but I love to do Don Giovanni himself um uh -huh. so I made a transition from bass to bass baritone recently um so I feel like I'm ready to do those roles and my this is more like in a couple of years um if not five is um <laughs> it's a Dutchman from Oh Friday, wow Dutchman Yeah, that's uh, something light, huh? Very light. Something light. Something light. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Those wow. are the ones I'd love to do. Good. Just... It's uh, actually something to look forward to. Yes. Uh, it, it, um, good thing you mentioned uh, what, what we are working together on. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, uh, a concert with a twist. And I'll tell you what the twist is. You know what the twist is. A uh, concert for our friends uh, at Ormaco in Medina, Ohio. Uh, we usually have, uh, we do a summer concert, you know, Cleveland Opera Theater, and we are there in Medina w w for one of these concerts, and we have a great audience out there. Uh, first time we were there, uh, we had five, six hundred people show up. I mean, a great reception. It was, it was lovely. It was lovely. Gazebo, food. I mean the way that opera should be uh, should be enjoyed, you know, not just sitting and, and, and watching. I, I like to be alive. You know, the Rossini in Naples, uh, theater, food, uh, drinks, uh, talking. It's life because opera is life, all right? Anyway, I digress, but we know that. So tomorrow we have a concert. The twist is that it's a, it's a, a virtual concert. So it's part live and part recorded. What's recorded is uh, the aria that uh, you guys are singing. And what's live is something similar to this, basically, where we just talk about the music. We just talk about the, the, the characters that you're playing. So uh, would you mind uh, just reminding, reminding us uh, what you're singing tomorrow? Um, and uh, just talk a little bit about about the piece. Um, Kendra? Sure. Um, well, I've got the crowd pleaser, Abenera, um, <laughs> which is Carmen, a mm. role that I would also love to do. Um, and I will be covering um, next spring. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna learn that. Um, do you want me to talk about the piece itself? Or? No, just tell it. We, we, we know, I think that we, we know what, what Carmen is. I think there's a, a, the, the a cappella piece that you're playing, that you're singing. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, um, also, you're going to sing If I Loved You from Carousel, obviously. Uh, but why don't you talk about the, the a cappella piece? Sure. It's, um, it's actually Vaughn Williams' piece um, from the Blake songs. And um, it is a cappella, which is part of why I thought it would be uh, an interesting choice, it given is. that we're doing so much a cappella singing at the moment. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, the, so the text is taken from William uh, Blake poetry. Yeah. And, um, it's an interesting piece and in where it sits in the cycle is also really interesting. Um, but I'm just doing the one. Yeah. The one piece. And, and it's a piece that was meant to be a cappella. So it just yes. works perfectly fine the way that it is, you know. Um, right. I, I think it's lovely to, to perform pieces that were meant to be in a certain setting. Uh, the, 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 the Blake Cycle is one. Uh, or, or do masses in churches because the music was actually the space between notes and instruments and reverb and all of that was meant to be there. It's really incredible to experience these pieces in the places where they should be performed. You know, it's just a different, just a different perspective. Um, That's, uh, that is one interesting thing about the piece is that um, it's meant to be a cappella and it's meant to be um, performed in a in an acoustic space that really gives you space and breadth for this piece, yeah. uh, which doesn't translate as well to a virtual yeah. setting. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, the reason I think is because uh, th that's why Von Williams. It, it's slow. It's a slower piece. Yeah. So it gives you, it gives time for the voice to bounce around and kind of sit in the air, right? And it also gives us a chance to not just hear the words, but also think about the words, you know? That's also what's incredible about music is you get to hear something, you get to experience it, think about it all at once. 
And then hopefully you just come out of the performance just like a normal, like a different, a different person almost. At least four or five minutes, just four or five minutes, you know, beautiful. Um, are you doing anything else? I forget. Uh, well, I learned uh, La Chirarem La Mano. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, it's my first time singing that. Uh, I'm glad it's with us. I'm curious to see how the uh, duet ends up being together. Mm -hmm. Well, last night I, walked, I worked on uh, Katie Katie for two hours. I went to bed around 2.30. And uh, because I, I started and the video was not good, and, and not it wasn't good, but downloading wasn't happening and and the program didn't work properly. The, the actual editing was about two hours, but it's fun. It's 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 different. You know, it's not a live performance. Nothing can replace live performance. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, so we kind of have to make it entertaining post production mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that don't translate into video and audio. First of all, your voice, uh, as I was telling you, uh, Kendra, yesterday, mics hate singers. They just don't like them at all. Uh, and especially uh, 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 operatic voice with a huge range and a certain technique and, 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 uh, and, and a certain production of sounds, microphones are not used to that. They're used to one beat, and they're used to uh, an untrained uh, instrument. That's what Mike's like a lot. Okay. Um, Hide, what are you doing for, for this concert tomorrow? Um, so since like you mentioned Katie Katie, um, Katie Katie is from Don Pasquale um, Act 3, I believe. Um, it what was a one. <laughs> it's, I love that duet, but uh -huh. I honestly, it was tough. Um, what was difficult about it? I think it's all that since it's like um, it's um, Noisetti, it's more like audio. It's not something like Verdi or yeah, um, Puccini. Um, things are very strict, the square in a lot of ways. But then that tempi change happens all over the place. Yeah. And also, hard part, especially the Don Pasquale or some of Rossini pieces, are the patterns. Like a lot of wars, and within like one bit. So yeah. <laughs> obviously, we know where the what kind of wars wars land onto the beat one or beat third beat or anything. Mm -hmm. It's doable with conductor is there. Yeah, but if you don't hear, I mean, especially like I don't hear the music well while I'm singing, so. Mm -hmm. Anytime, even when I'm on stage, I sometimes have to rely on, even I'm not looking at the conductor, I'm still looking at the conductor. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, know. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Especially then, like, those like, that's right. Yeah. It's that's right. So and, that, cool. that's, and that's actually when I say it all the time, you don't have to look at me always. You have to look at me once right there. And then yes. you do your thing, you know. Uh, but I guess I, I'm different than other conductors. You know how conductors do? Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. No. Yeah. The opposite. Please don't. Just listen and watch when you're supposed to watch. That's it. And then do your yes. thing. No. And how important when when you say that? Um, okay, this is the point you have to watch, and that's the point you need a conductor so badly. Yeah, and that's it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But. Without that, it's some some pieces are really tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So or, you're doing Katie Katie, you're doing Attila. Attila. Um incredible opera. Then Levadol from uh, um Faust. Faust which is really a fun piece for me. Um yeah. like it's my job is like um I always get to play someone who get killed on stage or who kill <laughs> someone on stage. <laughs> Or not even human being. Um, this is the only <laughs> not human being. That's true. Right. So, yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. So yeah, I, lo I love all those pieces, and um, I think what what oh the Madamina um from then, uh, Madame, that's right yeah from Giovanni very good very Giovanni. good well uh, I've been working on your videos I think you sound fabulous 
I think uh, that is great to watch you and hear you sing. I've been enjoying my work and it's, it's so good to, to have people that, that actually know what they're doing because either in front of a screen editing or in the pit, it makes my job a lot easier. Mm. Okay. Um, so if you, if, if, uh, Facebook audience is, uh, uh, is able to watch tomorrow night, I believe it's at 7 PM, uh, on the Ormaco, um, Facebook page, um, they can hear you sing and, and talk, talk again. We'll talk about different things. Um, I think that that's all the time that we have. Uh, you guys are young, wonderful, and you have your whole future in front of you. Uh, good luck to you. Uh, you will make it uh, because you're strong and you're prepared. And that's all you need. Okay? A little luck, maybe. Like, like a little salt on steak. Just yeah. a little luck every once in a while. Just every once in a while. Not, not always. Um, I want to thank you for, for joining me here. Uh, and I think I will see you very, very soon. Yes. Thank you so much, Maestro. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Bye.